This is Jack Jackson again. We're going to be looking at some some small uh, finite plane geometries, some with just a very few points and lines. Uh, these are in a plane, so we can either think of of there's no planes in existence, or they're all within one plane. If you want, either way, you can do it. Uh, makes no difference. And so we're going to be looking at these. I've got um, several of the different ones here. And these are only going to be incidence geometries. So the only types of postulates we're going to have are, are existence and incidence postulates. Since we're only in one plane, or, or we don't have to worry about any postulates dealing with planes. So as you're going through here, of course, we have action buttons. We're going to click on that. Of course, the simplest one we could get, very boring geometry, is a one-point geometry. Postulate 1, there exists exactly one point. Postulate 2, each point is on exactly one line. So the set of points is A, and the set of lines is the set containing the set A. And notice it has the following important properties. It's consistent. So we had a non-empty model that exhibits all the given axioms. It's independent. No axiom can be deduced from the others. If we replace any axiom with a contradictory axiom, we get a non-isomorphic model. And it is categorical. All models are isomorphic, essentially the same. They can be mapped to one another and keep the same incidence relationship. But, of course, this is a very boring geometry. There's no theorems. It's just extremely, extremely boring. So let's get another one. Well, this is still pretty much equally boring here. A two-point geometry. There exist exactly two distinct points, A and B. Each two distinct points are on exactly one line. So the set of points is a set AB. And the set of lines is a set containing the set AB. So two points taken together makes a line, and individually we have points. Notice that we're indicating with the Euclidean line here that these are incident with each other. They're on the same line. But that does not mean that this is a Euclidean line segment. And, of course, this is consistent, independent, categorical. Still pretty boring. The first one where we can get anything of any interest at all is the uh, a three-point geometry. Uh, not too many interesting results here, but we can build up a, a geometry here. So this one's going to have four postulates. And notice that these postulates that we've been talking about in these finite geometries here are the same as or similar to or different versions of the same incidence postulates that we used back in the uh, neutral geometry. So postulate one, there exist exactly three distinct points, A, B, and C. Number two, each two distinct points are on exactly one line. Postulate three, not all the points of the geometry are on the same line. We could have combined postulates one and two by saying there exist exactly three distinct non-collinear points, A, B, and C. That would combine both postulate 1 and postulate 3. And then lines are sets of at least two points. So let's see what we can do here to build a model for this. So we start with our existence axiom that there exist at least three points. There exist exactly three points, A, B, and C. Now what do we know? We know that if we have two points, they're on one line. So we look for pairs of two points. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm just going to build it up one at a time. So we find a pair of two points, A and B, and there must be exactly one line L containing A and B. That's statement one, uh, the part that A and B exist, and then postulate two says if you're given two points, then there exists a line, exactly one, containing those two. And we just gave it a name. We know that point C is not on line L. If C were on line L, then all three points would be on the same line, and that would contradict postulate 3. So notice we've already used postulate 1 and 3. And 2, actually. Now, there exists another line containing A and C. Okay. Again, statement 1 and postulate 2. And the lines... Uh, Line M is exactly points A and C. So I could have actually said, I could have actually, let me, let me rephrase number three and just say it the same way. L actually equals uh, the set A, B. And of course, obviously, since it's equal to that, not a subset, 
uh, one way or the other, but actually equal to it, then that is actually a, uh, what we're basically saying is point C is not on that line. And that, that's, that it contains A and B, but nothing else. And we can do the same thing for line M. It contains A and C, okay, by, by statement 4, but it can't contain B because, again, by postulate 3. Similarly, there's a line N that contains points B and C, and it is only B and C. Same reason. Okay, and so obviously these, since these are, we've listed them out, these are different. And so the entire set of lines is A, B, A, C, and B, C. There can be no others. So statements 3, 5, and 7 uh, have shown that we have these lines and that they're just, just obviously distinct because we know exactly which points are in them. These are the only sets of two points available. No, you can't have three points on a line because of postulate 3. And here's where we have to use postulate 4 has to be used because postulate 4 says lines are sets of at least two points, so we cannot have a line consisting of just one point. So in, in fact, we ended up using all four postulates. And in fact, these four postulates are actually independent of each other. And we're going to show that here in just a minute. So our model, what is our model? Our model is the set of points is set A, B, C. Set of lines is L, M, and N, which are a, the set A, B, the set A, C, and the set B, C. And, of course, our illustration for that is you can see it up here. Now, we do have a couple of propositions. They're not, uh, they're not too hard to prove. Um, we've kind of already proved some of these. Proposition 1, there exist exactly three lines. Uh, each line contains exactly two points, and each pair of distinct lines intersect in exactly one point. So in this geometry, there's no such thing as a parallel line. Every line must intersect every other line. And the proofs of these are very straightforward once you've got this, the, the derivation, the proof that we've already done above. In fact, we've already really proved Proposition 1 and 2, and then all we have to do for Proposition 3 is one step, we just have to look at our lines and notice that they, in fact, do intersect in exactly one point. Now, one of the things that's more interesting, I think, is remember that this set of postulates is consistent So, because we were successful in creating a non-empty model satisfying all the postulates. Okay? We also, it turns out to be categorical. Categorical means, means that any other model is going to be isomorphic. If you notice, the only thing that we had choices of really is what we called things, the names here. And, of course, that's, that doesn't matter. So we can, we can uh, these are all isomorphic. So it's categorical. The more interesting one is that, it's, that these are actually independent of each other. And so to prove that they're independent, what you have to do is come up with a model that satisfies the other three statements but violates the one. So, for example, to show that postulate one is independent of the other three, we need to find a model that satisfies, well, first of all, we've got a model that satisfies all four, first of all. And then in addition, of course, remember, that just shows it's consistent. In addition, we need to find another model that satisfies postulate two, three, and four, but makes postulate one false. And then if we want to make postulate two independent of the others, we need to find something that satisfies a model that satisfies one, three, and four, that violates two, and so forth. So we can do this. So when you're watching these videos, it's useful sometimes to stop and pause and uh, to work these out. So if I'm working out a proof step by step, you might pause it and say, okay, what is? what do I think the next step is? And then go ahead and then click on uh, play to see it materialize. Or if you're looking at the notes, you can do the same thing. So here, what I'd like you to do is maybe pause here for a second and see, um, see if you can come up with a model that violates postulate one but makes the other three true. Press pause now. Okay, now that you're back, hopefully you came up with something. Here's one example. This is not the only example. There are actually infinitely many different possibilities here. So, uh, for example, we could have four points, A, B, C, and D, 
then the lines could still be uh, all the sets of two points, A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, C, D. Of course, also notice without postulate one, the whole thing could be just talking about the empty set, in which case the whole thing is satisfied vacuously. So you could come up with maybe a different model for this. In fact, I think that's maybe one of the, I think I made this one of the homework tasks. Okay, but notice it still satisfies all the others. Each two distinct points are on exactly line. Lines are sets of at least two points. That's clear. And um, not all the points of the geometry are on the same line. That's true, but it clearly violates postulate one because there is there are more than three points. Perhaps you could, well, I'll let you figure it out. There's other ways you could work it. Better. Okay, try to see if you can do one for violating postulate two. And, of course, this is actually a homework problem, but then come back when you're done. Um, well, if you remove postulate 2, um, we, need, we say um, we need postulate 2 to guarantee the existence of some lines. So points A, B, and C are the points, and perhaps there are no lines at all, and that's the entire model. That would, that would still... Uh, Postulate 4 is satisfied vacuously. So it says if you have a line, then it must contain at least two points. Well, so what? We don't have a line, so that's satisfied vacuously. Not all the points of the geometry are on the same line, so there not, does not exist a line containing all the points. There doesn't exist any line at all. There exist exactly three distinct points. Still true. Each two distinct points are on exactly one line it is false because they're not on a line at all. There are other possibilities for this as well, some that actually have lines. See if you can come up with one for the homework. If we remove postulate 3, we could say we have points A, B, and C, and they're all on the same line. That would be about the only way we can fix. That's the only model we can come up with that's going to show that 3 is independent. So we need the points to be all on the same line to violate postulate 3. Lines are sets of at least two points, and since they're on exactly one line, this is going to be the entire model for that one. And for postulate four, we need to violate that the lines are sets of at least two points. Okay, so one way you could violate this is you could have lines containing one point. So this little, use this little circle to indicate that the set A by itself is a line. So in this case, all sets of size 1 or 2 are lines. Notice that don't you want to be careful in these finite geometries to not assume certain things. For example, there's nothing we don't necessarily assume that all the lines have, have the same number of points. Okay? We don't assume that every point has to be on a line. We don't assume anything. We have to make sure that it's stated that way in the postulates or it's something we can derive from the combination of the postulates. So notice we show that each of these is independent of the other by, remove, by coming up with a model that satisfied the others and violated the one. Okay, let me clean this up here. Okay, we'll stop there. We'll come back with another video for the next, next geometry.